a trolling motor comes in very handy. Whether you're fishing the backcountry for game fish like tarpon or snook, or maybe you like fishing residential canals working under docks where pinpoint accuracy with the cast is very important. Or maybe you enjoy freshwater, a good lake that produces panfish and bass. But again, being able to work a shoreline or structure is very important. And no other tool like a trolling motor can keep you on that structure and catching fish. Over the last 30 years, I've owned several trolling motors from all the major manufacturers like Minn Kota and Motor Guide. But recently, I purchased a small folding car top boat that I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on uh, for a trolling motor. After a lot of research, I decided upon the Newport Vessels trolling motor. Once you open the box, you will find a 36 pound trolling motor with propeller, four feet of electrical wire to connect to your battery, a 40 amp inline circuit breaker, a prop nut wrench, and your instruction manual. The reason why I chose the Newport Vessels trolling motor over others is because I paid $129 for this trolling motor, and there was not a Minn Kota or a motor guide trolling motor that was at this price point that was saltwater rated. To test out this claim, I took the uh, screws off of the uh, trolling motor and I ran them over a magnet and sure enough, uh, they were stainless. If they were iron, uh, they would pop right up as you can see what happens here with my screwdriver. So the hardware is uh, stainless and there's also a zinc anode uh, that protects the propeller area. And after three years of use, I have no rust on the trolling motor. Another feature that I really like about this trolling motor is a six inch telescoping handle. That really makes it easy to control the trolling motor while I'm sitting in a comfortable position on a seat. Another advantage of this trolling motor is that it can be used either on the transom or you can reverse the head 180 degrees and put it on the bow like I have it here in this photo. For those of you that may not be familiar with this, this is how the uh, trolling motor comes from the factory with the propeller on one side of the shaft and the handle on the other. If you want to put your trolling motor on the bow, you want to spin your head 180 degrees. So as you see in this picture, the propeller and the handle are both in the same side of the shaft. The instructions on how to spin the head are on the Newport Vessels website. It's a pretty simple process and it only takes about 15 minutes to do. And remember, if you just want to use a trolling motor on the back of the boat or the transom, you don't have to do any of this. You can just use it as it comes from the factory. You only have to spin the head if you are going to put it on the bow of the boat. On my boat, the trolling motor is on the front and the battery is in the back of the boat. So I bought this kit from Newport Vessels that gives you 10 feet of extra wire and all the locking nuts to connect the wires and also the electrical tape to put over the top of it uh, to avoid any shorts. Here's the clamp for the trolling motor. It's pretty standard for most trolling motors in this uh, class. Uh, it has uh, two uh, clamps on it, uh, which is really good. Uh, they're made out of stainless, so they won't corrode on you. Again, that's really good. Uh, it has about 90 degrees of uh, tilt on it from uh, full horizontal, which will be parallel to your boat, to 90 degrees down. You can also adjust the depth of how deep in the water your trolling motor goes by tightening down the collar uh, that's around the shaft. One thing I need to mention about this trolling motor is that the shaft is only 30 inches long. So you want to make sure that when you mount it on your boat that the propeller is at least six inches below the surface of the water. Otherwise, you'll create a vortex that will suck in air and that'll affect the performance of the trolling motor. The last feature I'd like to talk about is the battery power indicator. This is really nice because what I do is I use it to determine when I need to take the battery out of the boat and charge it. And I try never to let the battery get down below 
and that's a good rule of thumb to follow with the deep cycle battery. Speaking of batteries, here are the two that I use. If I'm doing a short trip and I'm just in a, a small lake and I'm going to only be gone for half a day, I use the battery on the right, which is a 35 amp hour battery I picked up at Harbor Freight. If I'm going to be going on a more adventurous trip uh, and I'm going to be trolling a lot of shoreline, like when I am in the Everglades or in the Keys and I'm going along a mangrove shoreline for hours upon hours, or it might be a multi-day trip, I use a bigger battery on the left, which is a Group 27 deep cycle battery, and it has around 100 amp hours of charge in it. It really depends on what your trip is that will determine the size of your battery. And remember to protect you and your batteries, use a properly sized battery box. So my bottom line on this trolling motor is that I would recommend it the only downsides is that it has a 30 inch shaft and it doesn't have a digital maximizer which will extend your runtime on a given battery, but no other trolling motor in this class has that feature. If you have any questions, please post them below. If you have any experiences that you'd like to share with everyone on this trolling motor, please post those also. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. And if you found this content useful, please hit the like button. Thanks again for watching and look forward to the next adventure.